It's been 50 years since July 20th, 1969, when this small step for man, but giant leap for mankind, was taken. In these five decades since, the world of space exploration has changed. Franco Malerba, the first Italian astronaut, says it's a field that requires much courage. Truly, we don't go up there just to have fun or to experience intense emotions. We go up to do the research they've entrusted to us. In a certain sense, we are the extended arm of the experts on Earth, awaiting the results of so many years of study. A large team of researchers and engineers monitored Apollo 11's entire operation from Earth. Armstrong, Collins and Aldrin were forever marked in history books as the first to live the adventure. Franco Malerba says being in space allows one to live out the pages of the atlases and the greatness of creation. We wonder, is there anybody down below? When the lights of the cities are turned on, and there certainly are, they are so intelligent. They learned how to interpret nature in such a way to create light when natural light is gone. Exploring the galaxy is something truly extraordinary. Few have the opportunity to see planet Earth from that vast perspective when its magnitude allows one's mind to see things from another point of view. The view of the Earth, the view of the cosmos, the way of approaching heaven in a certain sense, like it's being interpreted by men, philosophers, by intellectuals, and by the wandering shepherd of Asia. It is a place of transition, of encounter between God and man, between the human and the divine. It is a strong experience that confirms that there is a greater force. It's a force that has spurred human reason to innovation and advance to achieve this giant leap for mankind. Sixty years ago, Pope Paul VI visited the Vatican Observatory for the first time. In 1969, he watched live as the first man landed on the moon. And the observatory, also known as Specola, was created for a specific purpose. It was opened in 1891 by Pope Leo XIII on the suggestion of Father Francis Dents to show the world that the church was not against science. And it is precisely science, specifically technology, that has made it possible to visit from anywhere in the world the room with the telescope through which Pope Paul VI saw Apollo 11 land. Thanks to a 3D model, the Vatican Observatory has made it possible for people to tour the palace of the popes in Caso Gandolfo. People can virtually walk through the rooms of the observatory, visited by several popes, including John XXIII, Benedict XVI, and Francis. The Vatican Observatory offers this innovative way to get to know its history and to confirm once again that science and faith are complementary. At the beginning of the 20th century, religious sisters Emilia Ponzoni, Regina Colombo, Concetta Finardi and Luigia Pancheri took part in the world's largest astronomical project of the time, mapping the sky. Thus it was necessary to photograph the sky with huge telescopes and classify all its stars. The four sisters catalogued more than 480,000. Dall'anno più o meno 1880, the project started approximately in 1880 and lasted about 40 years. 18 national observatories divided the sky, then more observatories participated in the project, but the Vatican was in that first group and did its part. To understand why the Vatican decided to invest in astronomical research, experts Sabino Matteo and Paul Mueller explain that it's necessary to go back to the end of the 19th century. The Vatican Observatory was inaugurated in 1891 by Pope Leo XIII. It was suggested by Father Francesco Denza, an astronomer. The aim was to show the world that the Church was not against science. There was another diplomatic political motivation. The Vatican Observatory was seen as a national observatory at a time when it was being questioned whether the Vatican should be a state. Today, the Vatican has not lost its interest in astronomy and science. The observatory remains fully operational. There's another observatory in Arizona, fully dedicated to research. The headquarters of Castel Gandolfo, Italy, is more oriented to the organization of congresses and the museum. 
The professionals working there continue to include innovative and surprising techniques, such as this PlayStation remote control, which precisely handles some commands for this telescope. The Vatican's observatory, commonly called Specola, keeps unique memories and stories, such as that of the four sisters who studied the sky. They also preserve fragments of meteorites and memories of the popes that visited, such as Paul VI on the day man reached the moon. Those who work there continue to merge religion and science, as the astronomers are all priests. Following a four-month mission at the International Space Station, highlighted by a video chat with the pontiff himself, these astronauts have now returned to Earth and made sure to pay the Holy Father a visit in person. They also brought their families along for the eventful encounter. Anche i cosmonauti russi, sebbene non, non fossero cattolici, hanno voluto oh, sì, partecipare a questo, a questo evento. One of the little ones set the tone, warming the hearts of Pope Francis and her parents by presenting the pontiff with this photo of space bearing a Bible verse. She had it blown up and she gave it to him. She said, God bless you. And so that was neat that you know, here's a man who, who goes out and blesses people and blesses you know, millions and billions of people and, and, and everything. But for him to get a blessing from a child, you know, was, was, really, was really special. The gifts didn't end there. To show their appreciation, the astronauts presented Pope Francis with an authentic, customized suit. <laughs> but they decided it wouldn't have been fit for a pontiff without this special modification. Abbiamo fatto sempre le insigne del Vaticano le sue insegna di la verità, la bandiera del Vaticano, questi ah. sono le ali ufficiali della NASA o dei cosmonauti. And as for their visit, it wouldn't have been complete without the Holy Father's autograph on their Bibles. During the encounter, the astronauts found many parallels between their profession and Pope Francis's vision for themes like the peripheries and care for the common home. He uh, was just sharing how important it is, the work that we do, um, in mixing, you know, the science with faith and uh, just us being an example of, you know, going places that others have not gone and how that can uh, interplay with faith. The indescribable beauty of the planet that you look down and you see just the gorgeous, vivid colors and the life that's there without conflict, without, you know, without any strife. It's just very peaceful and it's humbling and, and wonderful all at the same time as we work to get more people to space to see that perspective and then maybe they're touched in their souls the same way maybe we'll be better to ourselves as well as our home planet. NASA's Expedition 53 was carried out from September to December 2017 and the astronauts represented the United States, Russia and Italy. Maybe the next mission will have a representative from Vatican City.